Hello and welcome to another video from the series how to test A and in this video we're going to have a look at testing file uploads. File uploads are one of the most common um, elements in a page that you as a tester will have to check and since they're so common it is very good to have a plan. So you need a plan to, to check it. You need a plan that you can either apply fully or partially when dealing with file uploads. It will depend a little bit on the context. And by the end of this video, I will, or you will have seen some elements or some parts of a plan or points from a plan. So let's get started. The first element in the plan is you need to think of size. What do I mean by size? I mean, you need to check the size or to keep in mind the size of the files that you are loading. On the one hand, you have the maximum size. So in general, you have an upper limit defined for the file upload. So you need to check that upper limit. You need to go above the limit, but not just like one MB above the limit, go also far above the limit. And it's always good to check the error messages in these cases. So will you get a, a, a nice error message? Will you get even a 500 error? The same applies to minimum size. So you will have a lower minimum size defined. You can check the dead limit. You can check below the limit and you can check the error messages. One interesting concept here, one interesting use case is to check with empty files. <coughs> there are cases when you can actually open up a text file, save it and it's empty. And there are applications which have special messages or special cases for empty files. File types. What do I mean by file types? Well, I mean two things. On the one hand, there is this concept of blacklist and whitelist. The blacklist is a list of file types or file extensions that are not allowed to be uploaded. So you have like a hundred types of files that you you, you're not allowed to upload and you need to check those files, the file extensions. And on the other hand, you have whitelist. And this is the complete opposite. <coughs> it, it lists the file types that you are allowed to upload. And depending on the project, you will have either a blacklist or a whitelist. And in some cases, both, but uh, uh, normally one should suffice. And once you have these concepts done, you need or you should think of a way to um, group or categorize your file extensions. I mean, on the one hand, you, you, you have your office documents, so you have your Word, your Excel, your PowerPoint, your text files, you have your images. So this can be on the on some static images and, or this can be animated images. It's really interesting to see uh, what happens when you do an upload of an animated image? Will that image be animated also after it has been uploaded, if it's used in the system, or it will be a static image? You can upload PDF files, videos, audios, and that's about the categories that I wanted to show you. Upload method. What do I mean by upload method? Well, there are a couple of ways to upload a file. So you have the standard way, where you have a button, you click the button, and then you can select the file, and then you have uh, that shown in your upload form. Uh, you need to check in that case, does the name of the file uh, and the attributes of the file, are they shown there in the form? In case you have long names, do you show the full long name or you, you cut it after a specific length has been reached? Drag and drop. A lot of cases uh, do support the use of drag and drop. So you just drag your file from, from your um, system to the web page or to the uh, desktop application <coughs> and the file should be uploaded. What you can check in this case uh, additionally is that when you do the drag and drop that your file is not shown in the browser because that would mean it was not uploaded and that your file is not shown and downloaded at the same time. And last but definitely not least, you 
may have the case where you can upload files via an API. Uh, here you need to check security uh, so that not, not everybody um, can upload um, so or, yeah, not everybody can upload files or depending on the type of uh, user that you are using, you may be able to upload different amounts or different sizes. You need to check error messages. So is the API giving back uh, clear error messages in case you, you have some issues? And also the response codes. What do I mean here? Well, if you upload a file, let's say um, image one, and then you upload and you get a 200 back, as a response code, and you upload again image one. So what do you get? Do you get still a 200? Do you get something like a duplicate? Um, this is something which you need to take into consideration. Now, the next part is, was the upload performed correctly? Uh, until now we saw, okay, um, what should we, uh, how do we do the upload? What type of files, uh, big, small, and so forth. But we need to check if the upload was done correctly. And how do we do that? Well, there are a couple of ways to check it. Um, the first one is checking the storage. So if you have access to either the database, if it's stored in the database or it's to the specific file on uh, um, <clears throat> file storage in something like Azure or the uh, file system. So you need to check there if the file is present. You can then download the file. So once you have uploaded, you can download the file to hand. You can have a look. Does it have the same um, size? Does it have the same? Uh, I mean, is it actually the same file or is it a different file? And um, in case you have, in case you have something like an image gallery, yeah, I mean, you can check then the file if the file how the file looks on the page. This comes back to my previous example where I said you can upload images and you can upload animated images. So in that case, you can check okay would your file be a static image or would your file be um, an actual uh, animation there now this is a, another use case virus and corrupt files so you can actually try to upload a virus there are systems which have a virus scanner and will not allow you to do that or you can upload corrupt files. There are ways to corrupt files and um, it would be interesting to see how how the system then reacts if you upload corrupt files. Do not worry. I mean, if you don't know where to, you can find um, viruses, save viruses, or how to corrupt your files, I will link some uh, videos in the description and also add the URLs to sites where you can perform these two actions. List, last but not least, is the list of test files. And what do I mean by this? Well, since I was mentioning in the beginning that it is pretty common or very common to have an upload functionality in a website, you need to have a way to structure. You need to have a list of your test files. Because, I mean, on the one hand, you have the option to go to the web, to go to um, each time that you perform the, the uploading tests, you go to the web and you download your files. Another way how I use it, for example, is I have a folder on the computer or on a storage, which contains my different kinds of files. So I have big files, video, audio, excels, PDFs, I have viruses, I have corrupt files, and when the time comes to actually perform an upload, I will just take one from there. And again, do not worry. I will link a video and a link in the description from resources where you can download all the types of files that you need to perform the upload tests. And there you have it. This was the list. As always, thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.